Hey there, my name is Jade and welcome to my space. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a flip through of volume 8 of my traveler's notebooks. This video is going to be a little bit on the chatty side, so if you just want to see like a quick flip through of my journal, there will be a short of it available here on YouTube, so that way you don't have to like sit through this whole long video. But I will be talking a little bit about my journaling process, as well as just giving you a flip through of this insert. And then at the end of that, I will be doing like a little bit of chatting about some changes that I made within my stationary collection and whatnot so yeah I, there will be timestamps and everything with all that being said let's just get into it i'm gonna move some of this stuff out the way really quick so that way i can give you a flip through but so this is my insert um this is volume eight and here's the back side decorated the front side with this uh really cute picture that i found in a magazine and then adorned it with like all of my favorite stickers and this little piece was of washi tape and then on the back side these got at re these got added recently i think i added these maybe like a month ago but this sticker is from the traveler's diner set and then these stickers right here are from the 2024 collection you know like how when traveler's company releases like their monthly inserts um as well as like the new pencil board for the year and all that um this is from that sticker pack that also comes out during that time i forget the proper name for that like pack but yeah what had happened was with these is I used to be using the monthly and the weekly insert from Traveler's Company for my health journal, but I ended up falling off with that and I didn't want those stickers to go to waste on that, on those inserts, so I pulled them off and then stuck them here. So that's why they're back here. So here's the front and back, and then this journal is a mixed paper journal that I made myself. I do have a Etsy shop that will be linked in the description, so if you would like to get a mixed paper journal for yourself, you can, but yeah, I enjoy using a mixed paper journal because it gives me more opportunity to be creative because it's like it's kind of like problem solving in a sense to me trying to figure out what works and what doesn't with the papers that I'm using and it forces me to be more creative and yeah so I'm just gonna get into the flip through now so here we have like the beginning down here I have an archive sticker from a brand that no longer exists called paper hands they stopped posting in during like covid uh during like 2020 so i was able to make my little archive stickers last until now i guess but i started this insert back in february and then ended it yesterday october 25th and then these stickers here are photo stickers from the canon ivy printer sometimes i will print too many photos and when i print too many photos i'll just use the excess and put them on the cover this year not as many in the cover but in comparison to last year um, last year I had, I think, both the front and the back cover filled with extra photos because I took way too, I printed way too many. So next we have this little Hello Volume 8, like, introductory page. I know a lot of people have, like, struggles with starting off their journal and will like to skip the first page. And even though that's not something that I really deal with, I do like to add these little, like, Hello New Journal type of pages in my journal it's just because I, i'm not really talking about anything important on this page but aside from the fact that i'm excited to use it i think this one is different from my previous insert because volume 7 was a traveler's company notebook and i didn't like change out the papers in that so it was like just all grid paper and a lot of my spreads ended up looking the same so i was just talking about how like excited i am to start this and to like actually get back to being more creative with my spreads so yeah something that you'll see a lot in this journal is the use of these star stickers i've become obsessed with these star stickers i think between last year and this year i don't know i feel like they just make like the perfect little adornment and yeah I don't really think I have like a journaling style, but I do a lot of like these little like collages in the corner, which isn't really like groundbreaking in terms of journaling, but like, I don't know, I do write a lot in my journals, which is something that I know a lot of people don't like to do, but yeah, I feel like my journal is a good mix of both writing and decorating, so you'll see a lot of stuff in it, more so tucked in the corners because I like to write a lot. Here we have the spread. I was back journaling for January because I spent the first week of January uh, with family. My niece had visited from New York and yeah, so lots of like these little Canon Ivy pictures. I use my Canon Ivy a lot and I love this spread because there's multiple days on the spread. So I want to, I want to say that like all this is Tuesday. This and then this pink uh, sticky note is that Thursday and then this little mishmash right here is uh wednesday the 10th so 
I will say though, spreads like this are something that I want to create more in my next journal because I want to get back into the habit of like daily-ish journaling. A lot of this journaling in this um, journal has been like mini sessions. Well, not mini sessions, but like very long sessions of me like backfilling because there have been a lot of times this year where I've taken a break from journaling and then had to backfill and try to remember everything that had happened within the last like two or three months and then fill it all within the pages. I think if I continue to do more little like mini things like this and like fill up my pages partially as the days go by, it'll be easier for me to keep up with the journaling if that makes sense. Uh, so for here we have January 2nd, January 4th, and then January 10th, right? But then here we have January 5th. My niece was in town from New York and then her college friends came uh, to visit us from San Diego and we ended up hanging out that day. We went to brunch to one of my favorite um, diners out here in Palm Springs and then we went to one of my favorite thrift stores in Palm Springs and then we ended up at like this cute little uh, stationary place. And then we also ended up at the Trixie Motel. If you know who Trixie Motel is, she's a drag queen and she has her own motel here in Palm Springs, which is really cool. And the lady who not is running the place because it's, Trix it's Trixie's hotel, but the lady, I guess you could call like their front desk um, agent or whatever, uh, she decided to let us in because one of my niece's friends was like, is like a huge drag race fan and loves Trixie. And yeah, and then it was really cool too because uh, they... That girl made us reservations at, at the bar there, and we got really cute little drinks. And the drink that I had, I don't remember what it was called, but it was actually pretty good. And I'm not someone who drinks, like, at all ever, so yeah, it was a really nice time. And then this was January 11th. Uh, my niece and I went to uh, Corona Del Mar, which is a town in Southern California, like right on the coast, and we went to the beach. And then afterwards, we went to a restaurant called Circle Hook. And if you've never had fried pickles before, y'all, they're so good. I had fried pickles. Well, we both had fried pickles here for the first time ever, and it was just delicious. So yeah, we just went to the beach. I was supposed to go to a doctor's appointment, but they ended up uh, canceling on us, or on me, I should, I should say. And and we decided to just get up and go to the beach anyway so yeah here i have one of my musical memory stickers this is the first iteration of that sticker i've since like re redesigned it a little just barely i just changed the font and the little check mark boxes are now circles and that's what it looks like but these stickers are available on my Etsy shop as like a pack of 12. The little receipt, pictures galore. I'm a huge picture person because I used to be a photographer. And then I'm going to skip a couple pages because something, not traumatic, but I went through a hard time and needed to journal about it and I had originally wrote what I journaled as like a note in the notes app and then I transferred that note into these journal pages um which I don't think I would ever do that again because it, it's kind of a waste of space in a journal of this type but I wanted to test it out anyway so so yeah I'm just gonna skip over those pages but yeah here we have the date festival with me and my friends um I had bought myself the ransom note sticker book and don't get me wrong I understand why people like the ransom note sticker book but I only used it the one time and I don't like it. I feel like the letters are just slightly too big for me if that makes sense. I feel like they just take up just slightly too much space and I'm someone who likes cohesion a lot. While I understand like why the stickers are the way that they are, I don't like that everything is like incohesive. I sound like a madman saying that but hopefully that makes sense. But yeah, stickers and then this little strip does come out but I decided not to pull it out while I was writing because I didn't have that much to write about and I figured that out while I was writing it so. Next we have a mishmash of stuff and like I said I took a lot of breaks from journaling this year and I think I didn't start back up until well, actually, I did this, I did, I finished this spread when I was in New York, I think. Like, I just wrote, like, the words, like, it was already decorated, I just had to, like, write about, um, this spread. But I think I wrote about this when I was in New York, which was in May, and the date festival happened in February. And then, I think this, I didn't start, like, a majority of the rest of the journal until, like, August. But this spread right here is about March and April. So, photos on this side... And then I made like a whole like little spread dedicated to the madness that was March and April. March and April were really hard months for me because I ended up dropping out of school again. My car got repoed and then I also um, ended up getting pneumonia 
And then I also went to a funeral. And then I ended up in the hospital twice because of the pneumonia. And because of that, I missed my niece's uh, college graduation. You know, it was a hot mess of the two months, you know? So anyway, <laughs> you have to remember that like life is good and life is also bad and that's okay, you know? Anyways, um, went to New York at the end of May uh, to hang out with my niece, which ended up being better for her and I specifically because if I had gone to New York during her graduation, we wouldn't have had time to hang out. And because I went after the graduation, we had time to do whatever we wanted, you know what I mean? So, we went to New York. I will say, I've done a lot of traveling, not to flex, that sounded like a really bad flex, but I've done a fair amount of traveling, and all of the spreads that I've made in accordance to the traveling that I've done haven't been, like, good-looking spreads. Like two years ago, I went to Disneyland for the first time in like almost 10 years. The spreads that I made about me going to um, Disneyland were so ugly. Whereas like these spreads for my New York trip um, actually turned out pretty nice. Still lots of pictures from uh, the Canon Ivy mini printer. I didn't do any actual journaling in New York aside from me finishing, I think it was the spread. Everything else I did after the fact. So like I said, I started uh, getting back into journaling around August. So yeah, but I kept all the ephemera and everything and tried really hard to make sure that these spreads turned out nice. Day two of me in New York. Again, still lots of pictures. This receipt from a DoorDash more pictures on this fun little doily and then I will say this side of the doily has one of my favorite collages that I've ever done so just to like so that way you get like a slightly better picture but that's what it looks like on this day in New York we went to uh Washington Square Park we went into New York City my niece lives in upstate New York so we took the train into Manhattan to visit one of her teachers who was doing like an art showing and then we went to her favorite club afterwards but in between the art showing and the club we went to Washington Square Park um to hang out so yeah so that's tons of pictures lots of ephemera from this day which I really enjoyed and then like some more tame journaling less decoration more writing and then once again, kind of less decoration, more writing. This was for day four. The day after we went to Washington Square Park and clubbing and all that, my niece and I spent the whole day doing nothing. And when I mean nothing, I literally mean nothing. We got Shake Shack for breakfast, which was like at noon. And then we had fish sticks for uh, dinner. We were deceased at the end. We were basically deceased the next day because we did so much walking. But then here's like another one of my musical memory stickers um, that has Pump of the Jam on it. And yeah. And then day five of me in New York. This was my last full day in New York. And this was the day that I went out and did stuff on my own. I had like a very stationary filled day. And I went to Nico Neka Zakaya. And I went to Casey's Rubber Stamps. And then I went to Tomp Tompkins Square Park. And then I went to this restaurant called Evil Katsu um, and had dinner by myself, which was really cool. So these photos are from me at Nico Neko. Um, and then the washi tape that they have there that has like their brand on it which is really cool and then oh yeah I also got gelato at this place called gelatoville and then went to Casey's rubber stamps and got some stamps uh I will say I had a lot of fun this day I really liked going to Nico Neko but my only issue with Nico Neko is that that store is quite literally a shoebox and cannot hold more than like 10 adults at one time and I'm not claustrophobic but I do like having personal space and because Nico Neko is getting more and more popular because of all of the work that they've been doing on TikTok, it's very easy for that store to get crowded very fast. And that's something that like bothered me a little, which is crazy because I, I always, I've seen pictures of Nico Neko over the years and have always wanted to go and always knew that the place was small, but like you never understand how small a place is until you're actually standing in it. And yeah, Nico Neko's really tiny, um, but, but still I had a lot of fun. I got some stationery and was very happy. And then they didn't have the washi tape that I was looking for though. Um, that was like the only like bummer about that. And then Casey's Rubber Stamps is a, again, another shack, super tiny store, but it's a specialty store that specializes in rubber stamps. And I got three stamps from there. And this art and that art are from like his stamp designs. 
and it is run by a guy named Casey. He's hella old, and there was like a younger uh, girl in there who like was actually like running the register. But not only do they have like a wall of stamps that you could pick from, but they also have like this massive binder of stamps that you could choose from. And I chose specifically not to look in the binder because I didn't want to run across anything that I knew I would be upset if I didn't have. But I will say they do have a website, I believe. So maybe in the future I'll probably buy more. I just need to, you know, spend some time looking. And then the little receipt to Evil Katsu and whatchamacallit did a bit more journaling on the back side of the receipt. But the series of events was going to Manhattan and then going to Nico Neko and then after Nico Neko I went to Gelatoville, got gelato, and then after I got gelato I walked to Casey's Rubber Stamps and then after Casey's Rubber Stamps I went to Tompkins Square Park and then after Tompkins Square Park I went to uh, Evil Katsu and then I went back to upstate New York and yeah it was a really cool day to spend by myself. I will say though New York is very big. <laughs> New York City is very large and I know that sounds kind of dumb but like I don't know how to describe it because I'm from California and I'm from Northern California. So I've spent a lot of time in San Francisco and I feel like San Francisco is so small. I mean, San Francisco's big, but it's also very small in comparison to New York, whereas New York City is massive. And I did not realize how massive New York City was. So it's not that I didn't have a good time. It's more so that like the next time I go to New York City or the next time that I go to New York, I think I just strictly wanna be in New York City and be there for like two weeks so that way I can explore New York better so that's like a goal for me in the future if i ever get rich you know but i will say evil katsu if you ever get the opportunity to go the that food was banging i got the uh chicken tonkatsu bowl so good and then yes i went home the next day so my flight back home it was decent and then here I have like another like summary spread. Um, I did ceramics over the summer. One of the classes that I was taking in the spring semester was ceramics. And because of my health issues, I was able to retake ceramics again in the summertime. So it was like an eight week course but it was like Monday through Thursday. And then two days a week, we had lab after class. So it was a ton of time to spend in the ceramic studio. So I got to make a lot of work and I loved it. These little pop-out stickers are from Michaels. And yeah, just a little collage of all the stuff that I made here and wrote about how like happy I was to take this class over and to do it in a way that was like not sustainable, but like, in a way that made more sense because with the regular semester, it's just two days a week and then lab at the end of the week. And while that's still a decent amount of time to make a decent amount of work, I just felt like the eight weeks and the four days a week with the two hour labs after just made more sense, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, moving on. Uh, this day I had lunch with my friend and then we went, we went to my favorite brunch spot and then we went thrifting and then we went to the mall and then we got ramen at the mall and then I helped her shop for her mom's um, birthday, which was fun. And then this was another day uh, that I hung out with some friends. I met them at a boba shop and we got boba and then we went to In-N-Out Burger afterwards and then we walked around the mall for a little bit after that. And yeah, here's another day. I went to see The NeverEnding Story in theaters. So, oh my God, this day y'all, I think it was for the 30th anniversary of The NeverEnding Story, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. Love The NeverEnding Story. Um, if you've never seen it, you should watch it. It's so good. But I had known about this day since January and had been patiently waiting for um, July 21st to roll around so that way I could finally see it in theaters. And it was so beautiful. And my only gripe is that the theater wasn't full, but you know how like you have to like pay for seats now? When I purchased my ticket, I was the only person in my row and you would think that's a good thing like yeah cool you get the whole row to yourself apparently not this whole big ass family of like eight people was sitting right next to me and I wanted to cry so bad at the end of this movie because of how like just happy it made me but because I was sitting next to this big ass family I couldn't cry <laughs> I I didn't want them to think like oh what's wrong with her why is she crying at this movie it's not that big of a deal it is to me it is to me so that was like my only the issue and mind you this this movie wasn't sold out there was plenty of space for people to move um and the only reason why i didn't move is because i got there on time i got there like 15 minutes before the movie started and because like with older movies like this they don't play previews beforehand 
So when the movie starts, the movie starts. So I didn't want to like get up and move once they got there. I didn't, I didn't want to like seem rude, you know? So yeah. Anyways, I say all that to say, if you see someone sitting by themselves at the theater, don't place your entire family next to them. Ugh. And then, so that was the 21st. And then 10 days later, I went back to the movies to see uh, Blackpink, Born Pink on in cinemas or whatever. But it was Blackpink's Born Pink World Tour. And mind you, I saw Blackpink twice last year um i saw them at coachella and i saw them at dodger stadium and then i saw the exact same tour once more in theaters and it was actually really cool to see it in theaters and i hope that they release like a blu-ray or something and the reason why i say that is because as much as i love blackpink okay i listen to their live albums more than i listen to the regular albums and because they have like such good live albums and i've been waiting patiently on pins and needles for them to hurry up and release the live album for born pink tour and at this point y'all i don't think we're getting it and it's pissing me off because their band their backing band so good and just the way that they sing live oh just freaking 10 out of 10 every time and i just want them to freaking release the live album already but the reason why that they put out the born pink tour in cinemas was also in contingency with their eighth anniversary so that's why i have their eighth anniversary picture here and yeah Here's a more simple spread. So this is, I believe, like the little money envelopes that you would give out during like the Lunar New Year. This envelope I got from Daiso, but I got it from Daiso a couple years ago. Um, but in here is like a letter basically something happened i found out some news was very upset for a very long time and had nowhere to place my anger and what i did was i took out like a regular notebook and wrote down everything that i was feeling and it's three pages long like three physical sheets and i want to say two of those sheets are like front and back so like five page letter of recounting everything that happened and recounting my feelings um and just trying to grapple with what had happened and so what I did after I wrote everything out, I folded it up, put it in this envelope, and glued this envelope in here because I thought it was important for me to keep. Well, it was important for me to keep. It's something that I want to look back on in the future when I'm over everything that happened and to, to just make sure that like I don't allow myself to get hurt in that way ever again. And then I have this page that says my life currently. This was written on September 1st and was just giving like a life, life update about myself. And then next I have this collage that I made. I haven't made a collage like this in one of my traveler's notebooks like ever. When I used to like journal in like regular notebooks, like uh, like a Loistrom notebook, I would make collages like this all the time, but I have never done it in one of my traveler's notebooks and I kind of just needed to considering the hard time that I was going through. And yeah, love how it turned out. Here's another spread. I put down this line paper because I didn't want to see all the collage photos in the back, like how you see right here. And then just wrote about how I feel about certain things. This is a double page spread. So one day, two pages. Next we have this spread. I made a video of me making this spread, um, which I will link in the cards. I have another one of my musical memories stickers. I love this sticker and this is what the redesigned version looks like. So nicer font, circles instead of squares, and it just looks nicer in my opinion. Um, and like I said, it comes in a pack of 12 with six different designs. But I, these are my favorite stickers I think I've ever made. And the reason why I love them so much is because I'm a big music listener and I wanted to be able to document like all of my favorite songs in a better way. Something that I would do at the end of each insert, which I did do in this insert as well, is I would put like a little playlist of all the songs that I listened to a lot when I was um, filling out this journal, right? But now with these little musical memory stickers, I can just put in like, oh, this is the song that I'm listening to a lot right now. This is the album that I'm listening to a lot right now. Slap it in there. Call it a day, you know? So yeah, love that. And then. I did this spread September 19th, right? So that was like a little over a month ago. And then the day before yesterday, I took the time to finally finish filling out the rest of this journal. Um, because I had, I knew that I had like stuff that I wanted to talk about and write about, but I had just kept putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And then I was like, you know what, enough is enough. I need to finish this journal and I need to move on. Um, so you will see a lot of like YouTube shorts and TikToks of me making these spreads because I wanted to film, but I didn't want to film like a full YouTube video for them. So I will be posting the spread that I made on Instagram Reels, Shorts, and uh, TikTok eventually. 
so yeah but anyways here is this one me and my friend went and got both of our first time uh was a seafood boil and that was really fun um and here is the little moist towelette thing from the seafood boil place and then on september 26th i got my first order from my etsy shop um because of a tiktok that i made which was really cool i need to get back onto tiktok and be more um what's the word consistent and then here i had my first like art show i guess you could say like flea market thing um as a creator um at my local community college they let us do like a little free art market and staff students and alumni could apply and i had applied to do the same market back in april but couldn't do it because i had gotten sick in april right uh so I'm very close with like the director of the art market here and she was like oh just apply again so I did and sold I sold six items for this cute little two hour market which I think is pretty good especially for my first market ever I had my stationery and my jewelry out and I did a pretty good job and only two of those sales were from friends so yeah I thought that was cool but I have this little prices thing stuck here because I had meant to place it in the spread initially but I forgot and then so I just put it in a little paper clip afterwards i do that a lot when i feel like i forget to use like bits of ephemera that's something that i did a lot in my previous journal um in volume seven there's a lot of extra ephemera just clipped in like this on almost every spread and then here i have my little freebie sticker that i made for my shop it's just a little polaroid and then it says my little logan my little slogan which is uh cherish the mundane and then the day before my birthday i went to go see xg in la um if you don't know who xg is they are a japanese girl group and all of their songs are in english they're currently on their first ever world tour and yeah their tour date for LA was the day before my birthday. My birthday is October 7th and their tour date was October 6th and I got two pieces of merch. Uh, the first was their sticker set. came with this sticker that says the first towel at the bottom because that's the name of their tour and then I also got myself a light stick uh, but my light stick is on the shelf and I'm not gonna grab it but use the little thingy the little label for the sticker pack as like this little flap I have photos from their Instagram account from my tour stop and then me and my friend and then we got dinner afterwards and then this and then this little card I had put in because I had meant to make it like part of the spread as like another flip um but forgot because this was stuck in my purse and I forgot about it and then remembered about it yesterday and then decided to just pin it in because obviously I couldn't stick it in anywhere and then more photos down here and like I said this is their sticker too and then for the next spread we have this one I spent my birthday in bed um just because I was feeling a lot of things um like I said my birthday is October 7th and so the whole Palestinian thing has been weighing a lot on my mind as well as the fact that I just turned 29 you know not trying to be hella existential but like like, finally being 29 is so bizarre and that's what I'm gonna say about being 29 right now then I made this page yesterday because I was going to put another day here but that day really wasn't a good day it was a bad day and it was a day that I didn't really want to remember so I just decided to talk about my feelings of not being 29 but looking back at uh, being 28 and just talking about how being 28 wasn't that bad and how last year and this year a lot of good things happened last year and a lot of bad things have happened this year and it's like life is all about balance and you just gotta like roll with the punches you know what i mean so yeah and then if you follow me on instagram you would know that i have been ranting and raving up and down about interview with a vampire um the tv show it is so good it is so good if you have not seen interview with a vampire i really hope that you would check it out it's such a good show but my favorite my favorite season because there's only two seasons right now my favorite season is season one but my favorite episode is the pilot episode the first episode and my favorite scene from the first episode is the ending scene and i went online found the script and printed out the last few lines that louis says at the end of the first episode and as well as like some pictures from that scene i'm not gonna spoil anything but this scene right here Mmm, 
it just i haven't had like a tv show that has hit me this hard in a very long time because to be honest with you guys i don't watch much television anymore all of the television that i watched this year majority of it has been rewatches of things that i've already seen i rewatched vampire diaries i rewatched game of thrones i watched succession for the first time because i knew it would have an ending because it ended at season four right um i i watched house, house of the dragon um season two uh because I, I had watched season one and aside from Succession, House of the Dragon was like the only like new show that I chose to stay tuned into, right? Until Interview with the Vampire. Freaking TikTok got me and I got randomly recommended all these edits of Interview with the Vampire and I was like, you know what? Because I had already seen season one um, when they put it on HBO, I think last year and I watched it and I was like, okay, that's good. But then I rewatched season one and then I watched season two because I didn't want to be spoiled about season two on TikTok and just was completely in awe of how beautiful season one was. And I'm not saying that season two is bad by any means. Season two is also really good. I'm just annoyed with one of the characters right now and I sped through season two the first time I watched it. So now that I'm rewatching it, re-enjoying the beauty that it has to offer. But yeah such a good show if you haven't seen it please check it out it's really really good they also have the first episode um here on youtube which i will leave linked in the description because i do think y'all need to watch interview with the vampire i need more people to talk to about this show Ugh. anyways then my next page we have a little like dedication page to liam irregardless of how you feel about liam and irregardless of, of how you feel about the whole situation of everything that was happening before he passed all i'm gonna say is that he was a very big piece of one direction even though i was more so like a harry and a zane girl i still appreciated all the members in one direction loved them all equally and yeah I will say this whole thing has been very bizarre and I've been actively avoiding it because I feel like if I give it too much attention, I will break down and cry like everyone else did and I just can't afford that right now. I'm respectfully too busy for that but I wanted to make a little dedication page to him because I was a huge massive directioner and that five years that they were at their peak bro holy shit I was there every step of the way until Zayn left when Zayn left I was like oh bye peaced out with him which I kind of regret now but still but yeah because I've been in the k-pop space for a good couple of years now I've come to the conclusion that I will never love another boy group the same way that I loved One Direction they just none of them compare One Direction was just so integral and so pivotal for me and I will love them forever and I really hate that Liam's gone because you could really tell that he was the one of the group who loved the group the most so yeah Next, we have a spread dedicated to um, the song APT. Well, not spread, but page dedicated to the song APT by Rosé and Bruno Mars. Um, absolutely love the song. I will say some of Bruno's fans are kind of annoying, and that's all I'm going to say about that. But I'm very excited for her and all the success that she's getting off of this collab, how much people are loving it, because she's my bias in Blackpink and has been, like, my bias from day one. Um, um, because I got introduced to Blackpink through their documentary and she was the one who stuck out quite obviously and was the most interesting for me personally. Being able to follow her journey these last few years and her finally getting like a bit of the recognition that she deserves has been quite nice and yeah so I just made this little page uh, talking about how happy I was for her and um, how much I really like the song. And then we have uh, my playlist page i just went on to uh, apple music and looked at all the songs that i've listened to the most for this year and just wrote down like the ones that i felt like were not true but like just like a good like selection like a good mix of songs and like i'm not gonna say genres because the majority of this is pop music but but still so there's if you know you know by xg espresso by sabrina carpenter unfortunately that is my most streamed song of the year can't wait to watch my apple music wrap up and it tell me something that i already know and then saturn by SZA, uh red wine supernova by chapel roan magnetic by islet lettuce by 5e um seven vesses by teeny and not like us by kendrick lamar very weird mishmash of music i will say but that's just been the vibe of the year. I'm not gonna lie though, I don't like this page, but I'll let it live because you have to let your ugly pages live. You just have to. 
and then here's my little goodbye volume 8 letter to this journal and basically in here I was just like oh thank you for the memories I loved most of the spreads that I made in here and life sucks but life will also get better and yeah and yeah, that is the full flip through of this insert. I know it was very long and very chatty, but I hope that you got some enjoyment out of it. Anyways, I'm going to move on to like the little stationary related things that I want to talk about. But the first being uh, volume nine. This is going to be volume nine um, in my traveler's notebook. I made this insert, I want to say like two or three weeks ago. Once I figured out that I didn't have that many spreads in my last journal to finish filling out, um, I decided to go ahead and make a new insert for myself. I did have another insert that I set aside for myself like a year ago that I was going to use, but I just, it's not so much that I wasn't inspired by that insert because that insert's really nice. I just wanted something new. I wanted to make something new and kind of jazz up some of the papers in here. So this is the insert. And like I said, I do sell my own inserts in my Etsy shop, but black cover. Uh, I haven't had a black cover insert in a hot minute. I want to say it's been like a, maybe like a couple years now, but here's a quick little flip through. This one's kind of like a glittery, if you can tell. And I got this little foil page. And yeah, so those are all the papers that are in this journal. These are, this isn't like super different from what I offer in my shop already. The only thing that makes this one slightly more special than the others is this little foiled page. I just wanted to experiment and try something a bit more jazzy, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'm really excited to like get this set up and start working in it. I'm really excited. And then the other like stationary update that I have is I love these reusable sticker books. Books. I think they are d one of the best things ever invented in terms of stationery. This one is a Stranger Things themed one from a uh, paperacious shop. Here is the shop. I bought this off of Etsy maybe like a year or two ago. I want to say maybe closer to two years, but within the last couple of weeks, I decided to start filling up the sticker release books that I have um, with all of the stickers that I have. This one had already been filled up. I think I filled up this a majority of this one either last year or earlier this year. So here's what was already done I think from like either earlier this year or last year and then these are all the pages that I filled up a couple weeks ago. And then I have this one that came in a two pack from Amazon. Here's the purple one and then here's the pink one. I actually don't remember if this came in a two pack. I feel like I'm making that up but irregardless I'll leave them linked in the description. But I really like the cover art first of all but also I got these I think either earlier this year or last year and I finally decided to just sit down and fill up the pages with all of my stickers. I have a lot of stickers and I had a lot of like loose like sheets and as much as I enjoy having a bunch of sheets of stickers like that and having like all the different like brandings and stuff, I have a lot of stickers that I just genuinely wasn't reaching for. Now that I have all of my stickers condensed into one of these sticker release books, I feel more inclined to look at the stickers and try to use the stickers that I never reached for. So this one, this this whole thing is filled all the way up. And then this one has like two pages left. And then this one is like completely empty. And then I have also like the Traveler's Company ones. I have two of the Passports and I have two of the standard size uh, sticker release books. And what I want to do is I want to take all of the stickers that are in all four of these uh, sticker books and put them into here and then go through each sticker book and pick out the ones that I want to actually carry with me. Because I will say, even though I love like a lot of the stickers in this notebook, even still there's a lot in here that I don't like naturally gravitate towards. Or like see these ones are Christmas themed, those don't need to be in here all year, you know? So I kind of just want to go through everything and reorganize. And yes, I know that's going to be a massive task. Filling up this one took like three days, but in my opinion, it's just worth it to have all of your stickers organized in a way that makes sense to you. So that way you can, so that way you can use them, you know? And then for the passport size ones, um, because I kind of have an idea of what my planner setup is going to be for next year, I kind of want to free up one of these passport size ones and fill it with planner stickers for 
said planner for next year just to make it easier on myself but yeah sticker release books one of the greatest problem solvers of having too many stickers okay sorry if the camera angle and everything changed a little bit there was one more thing that i wanted to talk about in terms of like the stationary side of things and that was the archive binder and how i'm archiving my filled up notebooks this is the traveler's company archive binder i forget what number like this is considered amongst their inserts um, if it even is numbered, I genuinely don't remember. But I bought two of these last year um, because I already had one and that one was filled up. And then this is the second one. And then I have like a third one in storage somewhere. But I'm going to be placing my finished journal into one of these binders. I like the Traveler's Company archive binders. I think they serve their purpose very well. Um, but I also think buying these is only worth it in relation to how often you fill up your notebooks. So this volume of my journals is from 2022 and technically I never finished it because um, I never finished it. It's a lot of these pages in the back are blank but this one encompassed majority of 2022 right and then you have this one which was all of 2023 and this is the insert that I was talking about that was the Traveler's Company one where all of the spreads I felt like looked the same but this one lasted practically all year um, up until I got bored of it and decided to switch to this one but it's not so much that I got bored of it it's more so because I it was the new year it was January of this year and I just decided randomly that I wanted to start a new insert instead of um, forcing myself to finish this one I kind of just wanted to keep all of 2023 um, in its own insert and not have to include 2024 so that's why I have this one now right so ideally if you're not putting in any ephemera or any pictures or any stationery like stickers and washi tapes and all that inside an insert then you can and you're just writing in them you can fit five inserts in one of these archive binders that's its main purpose but because i'm decorative and i like to add a lot of stuff to my uh inserts i can only fit like three inserts in here at a time which is not bad considering it encompasses up to a whole year's worth of time right so this one is from like february to october but i back journaled january right so um i believe these archive binders are about like 18 to 20 dollars i will put a link to them in the description but in my personal opinion, I do find them worth the money because I feel like they are the most concise way for me to archive my journals. Because it would either be one of these binders or just a generic shoebox. So that's like that. And then I'm going to stick these two rods in the middle. There you go. And yeah, so now I have all three inserts into this one binder and then when I get some time I will decorate the cover and what I did with my first binder of these is I did like a little collage with like a bunch of different types of paper and then I put I think it was like 2019 to 2022 and then this one will be from 2022 to 2024 and then on the spine it'll have like number two that's how I'm like um, storing my inserts and then I think I have another one of these in storage somewhere I have like boxes in my room that I have to go through to f uh, find it either that or I will just have to buy another one of these, which I'm gonna have to do anyway. Um, so I'll probably end up buying like two more. That way for like the next few years, I won't have to worry about buying these. But anyways, that is it for this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I know it was a bit rambly, but I hope even still, I hope that you enjoyed it and at least found it decently informative or at least got to know me a little bit better. And yeah, I will catch you guys in the next one. Stay gold.